do you learn in the video? Josiah? And then I'll get to her um, as well. From vibration, very good. Like Tig's showing vibration with his little makeshift drum. It was, um, it's this thing I made it, so the Amazium is, in the Tinkering Hub, they're doing this thing where you make your own instruments, and I made this thing, it's a, it's a, um, it's the cutoff top of a balloon on a, on a toilet paper roll. Oh, very clever. Yeah, that shows the vibration. Um, that's a fun thing that probably all of you could do at home. Part of a balloon on top of a toilet paper roll. That's a great little it's, drum. It's, except this isn't exactly a toilet paper roll. It's a bit bigger. It, it does seem quite a bit bigger, yeah. Harika, did you want to share something about sound as well? What did you learn in the video? It makes a fun sound. That, I like it. Well, actually, I was about to say the same thing that, that Josiah said. Okay, you can keep saying a little bit more. What, um, for example, could you show us how that vibration works? What's happening like in the air when that rubber band is being plucked or a guitar string? What's happening? Uh, the sound, it comes. There is sound because of that vibration. What's moving? The uh the string or the vibra I mean the vibration. The string is moving some particles, right? Mm -hmm. Ariane, can you add on to that? Because of the motion that is in the air, it makes a sound. Because the particles That's are now moving all around the place and bumping into each other. That's exactly right. We can't see it, but these air particles are being compressed when we have the vibration of, for example, a guitar string or a rubber band. Emma, did you have something new that you learned in the video that you want to share as well? Uh, I just wanted to say that my birthday was coming up soon. Oh my goodness, coming up soon. When is it again? March it's this 19th. month, right? March 19th, that's right. It'll be uh, um, actually during our spring break, right? Oh no, it's going to be the last day before spring break, I believe. Uh -huh. That's going to be so fun. Okay, so yep, hopefully you all learned something new with the sound video and um, some good lessons from that farmer boy story for those of you who um, just joined late. We were talking about um, the nice little story about the boy who uh, needed to show integrity by planting his seeds in the right place. You guys remember that? The lesson was that even if it seems like Nobody's going to know any different in that story. The earth knew and the seeds knew and they all sprouted up and showed the truth of what was happening. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the Pledge of Allegiance and school motto. Rishith, did you have something to ask before we do that? Yeah. How long is the spring break? Can you say that again? How long is the spring break? Spring break is one whole week. So that means for that whole week, you won't have school Monday through Friday. Okay, boys and girls, please join me in saying the pledge. Um, I'd love for Harika to lead us. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and visible with liberty and justice for all. Honor. Honor. I will honor those things which are good, true, and beautiful. Respect. I will show respect to others at all times. Service. I will do good things for others without being asked. Excellence. I will strive for excellence in all things. Perseverance. I will fulfill commandments and not give up to act on discouragement. Please join me for a moment of silence.
Okay, boys and girls, take out your whiteboard and marker. We'll start some phonogram and spelling review. Okay, for our first phonogram, Arshab, do you have your whiteboard? Let's write some phonograms that all say the sound E, starting with et E. Please write et E. Hold it up as soon as you're done with at E and say it as you write it. Great job, Kruthi. Arika, I hate to see that you're wasting some paper that might be like good drawing paper. You could, if you don't have your whiteboard, you can just write it on your binder. That would probably be a better place. Here's at E. Another phonogram that can make that E sound is it I E. Please write it I E. It I E. Excellent. Hold it up as soon as you're done. Next, how about ya yeah, it i e? Ya yeah, it i e. Great job, these should all be pretty quick. These are all single letter phonograms. Who can tell me another phonogram that makes the sound E. We've got a few two letter phonograms that make that E sound. Samhita, could you give me one? E double E always says E. Great. Let's write E double E always says E. E double E always says E. Oh, I see Alexander coming up with another one that says that E sound. Can you tell us that other phonogram, Alexander, that you just wrote? Here's E double E. E at A. Good. E at A. Please write E at A. Another phonogram that makes that E sound. E at A. Um, could you try rewriting that one, Tig? It, I think it is an A, but it kind of looks like two E's. We'll just straighten it up. But I, a lot of times, write my A's that way to be quick as well. Great. E at A. Can anybody else think of a phonogram that makes the E sound? Ariach? E-I. Ooh, good. E-I. Piece of pie, the backwards phonogram. Please write E-I. We say E-I, but we write I-E. Anybody think of another phonogram that makes the E sound? Let's keep it going. There's a couple more that I can think of. Rishith? I. We already have it, I, E. Good thought, though. 
How about AE that we do use at the end of English words and AE that we do not use at the end of English words? Excellent work, Tig. You're not sure of that one? That's okay, Emma. A-E like hey or key. And then A-E that we do not use at the end of English words. Like ceiling. A-E that we would use at the end of English words and A-E that we do not. Okay, I think that might be all of them. That's right, Emma. The first two make up that AE phonogram. Uh huh. <laughs> so you're just going to use those for your phonogram? That works. Okay, that's all for phonogram review. You can erase your board and let's do some spelling. Yes, Alexander? All of those equal a gigantic E. <laughs> all of them are E. Okay, boys and girls, time for some spelling review. Let's begin with the word chauffeur. Chauffeur. Try your best. This one's a tough one. It comes from French origin, which is why we've got some of the unusual sounds for these phonograms. Remember that we think to spell it chauffeur. Chauffeur. Saha Nasri, would you unmute yourself and say the thing to spell of chauffeur? Chauffeur. Good. Chauffeur. This one's tough. Great job, everyone. Run your best on this. We'll go over it in case you've got misspellings. Chauffeur. We think to spell. But we say chauffeur. Great job for those of you who remembered. We've got the phonogram ah, ah that we do not use at the end of English words, and ooh you, and a double F. I think Tig might have been the only one to spell it correctly. Way to go, Tig. That's exactly right. A lot of you were really close remembering some of the phonograms, but not all of them. There's a lot to remember for this. And it looks like Alina, you got everything except for the double F. So, so close. Arshab, can you correct it to chafur? Way to go, Sanhita. That's correct as well. Our next word is also a French word, debris. Do you guys remember how we think to spell this one? Who remembers how we think to spell this? Sanhita? Way to go, Tig, again. Debris. Debris, that's right. Please write Debris. Debris, Debris. Should look like this. Come on, Marcus. Try your best. You are a very fast writer, so just make sure that you've got your pencil in your hand as you're writing. For those of you who don't remember it, it's okay. These are This is our review time. As you're writing it, make sure you're sounding out that thing to spell each time though. Debris, chafur. Okay, a few more words that are going to use this OU phonogram. We've got maneuver. Can you all write maneuver? You think to spell maneuver. It makes me think of man overboard. Ma maneuver. Maneuver. Great job, Arshab. Great job, Aryanj and Tig, Samhita, Alina, Kruthi. A lot of you guys remembered this well. Great job. Maneuver. Next up, it's also going to use this UU, Europe. Do we 
need to capitalize it? Yes, we do. It's a proper noun. You rope. This is a great example of the second sound of ooh you. You rope. Come on, Marcus. Light bright Europe, please. The continent Europe. Great job. We think to spell you rope. Should look like this. Great job for those of you who got it right. Saha Nasri, you're so close, but we need that ooh you phonogram, which is e u. Okay, our next one also uses this phonogram pneumonia. Can you all write pneumonia? Do you remember what makes the n sound in this word? Way to go, time's on a roll. Ariant, what makes the n sound? Mm, Greek n. Mm. You got it, n, mm, Greek n, mm. pneumonia. Pneumonia. We know that Y can make an I sound, but it's not very often that I makes a Y sound, but it does in this word, pneumonia. Next up, penitent and penitentiary. These ones are more straightforward, penitent, penitentiary. They basically are spelled the way they sound. Penitent, penitentiary. Oh, sorry, Ty. There's only one in. Oh, you were on such a roll with all the hard ones. But yeah, that's understandable. Just one in penitent. Well, there are two, but it's not a double consonant. Penitent, penitentiary. Great job for those of you who got it right. It looks like Ariyanch and Alina spelled it right the first time. Way to go. I think Arshad might have as well. Whoa. Great job, everybody. Kruthi, you're so close, but it's going to be penitent with an I-E there. That's the only change. Only change. Okay, that's all for spelling review. Great job, everybody. You can go ahead and take out your binder for a new spelling lesson today. Some of you are already using your binder. Should be a quick transition for all of you. We've got some words that I think you'll be very familiar with in this lesson, but the first one might be new for you. Show me your paper once you're ready to go, please, boys and girls. I want to see that you are ready for our new spelling lesson. Great job, Arshad. Great job, Harika. Excellent, Kruthi. I see lots of people ready to learn, ready to begin our new words. Okay, our first word today is municipal. Would you all say municipal? Municipal. This is probably new for you guys. 
municipal is a word that describes something related to a town or a city. So there might be some municipal offices or a municipal government. That means like maybe just for Bentonville. It's the city of Bentonville's offices or the Bentonville government, like the mayor of Bentonville would be in the municipal government. So it's just for that town, not for a whole country, but just for one city or town. We're gonna think to spell this one municipal, and it's kind of like principal, like the principal. Do you all remember that? Like a principal of a school, we think to spell principal. Just like that for this one, municipal. Sound it out with me. Municipal, four syllables. First syllable, m, u, two sounds, that's u in an open syllable saying its name. Next, n, i, basic code. Next, s, i, two sounds, it's another k, it's a k, s, just like in principle. And then the last syllable, pal, p, a, o, is basic code. No double consonants in this one, municipal. Please pick up your pencil and write it. Municipal is what we're writing. Hold it up as soon as you're done, boys and girls. We're going to keep doing that probably for the rest of the year. Hold it up as soon as you're done. Excellent, Alexander and Arshav. Thank you so much, Alina. Great work, everybody. Marcus, it looks like maybe you're not writing yet. You should have a pencil in your hand. Sound out municipal as you write. Okay, bud, we can't just keep stretching. We've got to actually do the work when it's time to write. Time to do the work. Oh, Ty, you're so close, but we're going to think to spell this municipal. Last syllable, pal. Marcus, you should be writing right now. Perfect. Okay. Show me municipal, everybody. Mm. U, syllable break. N, I, syllable break. S, I, syllable break. P, A, U. Municipal, but we say municipal. Alina, would you mark it for us? Um, underline the U. Perfect. Um, put two above the C. Great. And put a thinking cap on the A. Excellent. And that's all. Bas that's exactly right. Yeah, it is seven syllables, basic code. That's correct. Could you tell me what part of speech it is, Alina? I'll give you the word in a sentence. The municipal government met at the courthouse. Mm, adverb? So, so close. Adjective. If you could describe a noun. Good guess, though. Okay, boys and girls. Oh, goodness. I hate when this happens. Okay, I'm going to leave the meeting and come right back because my video is not working. Okay, our next word is mischief. Can you all say mischief? Oh, who knows this one? Mischief. Oh, of course you guys do. I bet you guys are always up to some mischief. What does mischief mean? It means like it, trouble, trouble. Trouble's a good synonym of that. That's right. 
but Control not is- anything like very, very bad. It's just like pulling well, a prank on someone. That's kind of some mischief. It's a I little bit for mischief in my family. Oh no. Who else has some mis? Oh, Aryanch covering his camera. That's a little bit of mischief. <laughs> Aryanj, can you tell us what mischief is? It's like, um, like Tag said, um, to in trouble. It's like trouble. But you're causing trouble and making it more. You know, like I know how to explain it, but it's mostly just trouble. Yeah, kind of some trouble, but a little playful. Let me hear one more thing from Alexander. At the most mi- the day which is coming up is the is in April. The most mischief I make is on April Fool's Day. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah, April, April Fool's Day. Fool's very good. April Fool's Day last, is definitely last, a day filled with mischief because it's just like little minor pranks. It's just silly and funny. Last year, um, I pull at like probably like six in the morning. I got a, me and my mom got a scoop of whipped cream. He was sleeping with his mouth open, so we pour the whipped cream into his mouth. Oh, that's like, funny. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to think to spell this one, Miss Chief. Yeah, like Peeves and Harry Potter. Also, for those of you who read Harry Potter, um, Fred and George... They are up to a lot of mischief, and they have the um, Marauders map where they say mischief managed. Do you guys remember that? For those of you who've maybe read the books or seen the movie, no. Um, I think no, Brothers of Ron. Okay, so I think no, but yeah, I remember they're Ron's brothers. That's right. Okay, I so we think to spell this one. I'm sorry, Tyg. I'd love to hear from you, but we need to ask permission before we speak up. We think to spell it Miss Chief. Would you all say that with me? Miss Chief. Two syllables. The first syllable, Miss, is basic code. The second syllable, Chief, ch e f. There's a ch and e i piece of pi, the backwards phonogram. Just like in the word chief, like a Native American chief. Please pick up your pencil and write Miss Chief. Mischief. Come on. Right. Mischief. Great job, Saha Nasri. Yes, Sim- um, Simhita. It's actually connected to Rashi. So one time I was playing at her house and she told me um, she liked to pr- play pranks on her dad. So one night she had like this kind of nightmare. So whenever she was going to wake up her parents, instead of like waking them up normally, she took cold water and po- poured it on her dad's head. Oh my goodness. I hope that he wasn't angry. Okay. He wasn't. He just started chasing her around the house, but because she was small, she could like slide through things. <laughs> okay, everyone show me mischief. Great job, Alexander. Great job, Emma and Tyga. Show me mischief. Come on, Marcus, you can't just sit there. You have to be actively writing, bud. Mischief, right? Mischief. And hold it up when you're done. Great job, Josiah. Great job, Emma. So you're about to hold it up, I think. Um, last sentence. Um, I tried to look for a pencil because I couldn't find one. So I see. I didn't one. Okay. Arsha, please don't cover your camera anymore. Thank you. Mischief. We think to spell Miss Chief. There it is, Miss Chief. Alexander, would you mark it for us? Sure, but one quick thing. Arjun's moving. I know he is. That's you see him in for tennis, don't you? He, he he's moving this week. He's partially so, moving stuff. He still has a house here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alexander, can you mark it for us? Yeah. 
So, Miss is, um, come, sorry. Basic code. I can't remember what code. Basic code, yeah. And then, um, I, E, I, E, you say I, E, I, but right, I, E is supposed to be underlined and the ch is underlined. Good. And one more, we're going to put a thinking cap because we say an I sound for mischief. Okay. Mischief is a noun, but if we have an adjective form of it, it's an ad adjective. For the adjective form, we are going to write oh. mischievous. And probably a lot of you have heard of this as mischievous, but that's not the correct pronunciation, but it is what a lot of people end up saying. So it's not mischievous. We say mischievous. Can you all say that with me? Mischievous is the correct way to say this. So mischievous is going to drop that F and we're going to change it to V. And then we're going to add the adjective suffix with ow, o, u, a, and s. So mischievous. Can you all write it, please? Change out that f to a v and then add the adjective suffix. Great job, Alexander and Tig. Marcus, you've got to write mischievous. Great job, Emma. Let's go over the correct spelling. Looks like almost everybody's done. Yes, Ty? Um, I remember that one scene from the second Harry Potter movie where um Fred and George um crammed a firecracker into that salamander's mouth and then they set the firecracker off and then the salamander just went flying all over the place. Oh, that is definitely a good example. Then it landed in the fireplace. I feel bad for that salamander. I feel bad as well. Oh my goodness. I also remember another scene where um it was, this was in the first movie and um the mom was saying, you two blew up a toilet seat last year. What do you expect? And then on, on when they were leaving from the train station, they said, bye, Jenny, send you back a toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> so mischievous, that is definitely a good example of someone who is very mischievous. Mischievous. Actually, sorry, I'm going to have the V in this syllable since that is part of the base. Mischievous. So, miss is basic code. Over here, we've got ch, 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 e, i, which doesn't say either of those sounds, just like mischief. And our s ending, o, o, u, a, and s. Z. This one is an adjective. Hopefully you guys are getting pretty quick with recognizing when you hear us at the end of a word, end of an adjective, that's the correct spelling pattern, the O-U-S. Thumbs up if you feel like that is becoming quicker and quicker to pick up. That O-U-S spelling pattern at the end, Emma, when you hear like mischievous, adventurous, mysterious, it's going to be that O-U-S spelling pattern. when it's something to describe another thing and you hear us at the end. Okay, that is all for that word. Our last word today is pretty simple. The word is persist. Would you all say persist? Persist means to keep moving on. This is the base of persistence, which we're gonna do tomorrow. So to persist means you keep working at it, kind of like persevere. Sound it out with me? Persist. Two syllables. 
And that first syllable, the er, is er the er of her. Everything else is basic code in this word. Please sound it out as you write persist. Thank you so much, Ty and Ariant, for holding it up. Marcus, do you remember what the word is? Can you unmute yourself and say the word for us? Mischievous. Oh, we just wrote mischievous. The new one is persist. Can you say it? Persist. Perfect. Please write persist. Like... Persist through your struggles so that you can become better on the other side of it. Persist. Great job, everybody. Persist. Give yourself a big pat on the back if you spelled it right. Ariane, would you mark it for us? So on the first syllable, you underline er. And that's it. That's correct. That's the only marking. Now, what part of speech do you think this is, Ariyanch? Like the verb. Very good. I was going to give you a sentence, but you didn't even need one. Great job, everybody. OK, time to write the words in cursive. And then we're going to do something else in cursive, too. Municipal. Mischief. Mischievous. And persist. I also have a quote from Farmer Boy that we're going to write. Yes, Harika? Actually, I didn't get the first two words because you, you were breaking up and, um, and I had to leave the meeting about four times. I noticed that you were back and forth in it. Um, so write it now. M municipal, mischief, mischievous, and persist. Okay, boys and girls, for our cursive practice today, I want to write a quote from Farmer Boy yesterday. And when you're done with uh, the cursive words and um, quote, you're actually going to upload a picture of it to Brightthinker later for a, a classwork grade of literacy. Okay. So I want to write about uh, that part of the story where the little boy was lazy and then it was revealed that he wasn't um, doing the hard work. So we're going to write just part of it. We'll write with starting at, but the seeds knew. With quotation marks at the beginning. But the seeds knew. And. 
and the Earth knew. Meaning the soil. And when even, oh, sorry. And when even the boy had forgotten. his wickedness they told it weeds took that field So there's the quote. The part just a little before it was saying, nobody saw him. Afterward, he harrowed the field and the earth, um, and no one knew what he had done. So even though people didn't know what he had done, the seeds knew and the earth knew. I know this is a longer one. Show it to me when you're done. And you're going to upload all of this to BrightThinker later for a literacy classwork grade, your cursive words and your cursive quote. Yes, Alexandra? I accidentally put, um, but the earth knew instead of the seeds first. So I said, but oh, that's the okay. Earth. And then, you know, and then yes. I Okay, you could erase and rewrite it that way. You are allowed to erase in cursive. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it is now added to Bright Thinker so that after class today you can upload it and the quote is there if you didn't quite finish it. How many of you are finished? Excellent job, Rishith. 
I'm going to give a couple more minutes for those of you who are still writing. But then if you still need extra time, you can finish it up by looking at BrightThinker. Miss Garner. Yes, sweetie. There's a letter that I don't know. Which one? Um, after C. After seeds is new, K N E W. Oh, okay. That's a K. Okay, sweetie, it looks like you are maybe taking quite a bit longer to do your cursive. It's going to get faster and faster the more we write in cursive, um, but we will have to move on with our class right now. So if you need more time for your cursive, it is in BrightThinker so that when you upload your page, you can also see the quote there and finish it up. Now, Marcus, it looks like maybe you didn't do it at all. That's going to mean extra work later today, okay, because it is a BrightThinker assignment to take a picture of this. Great job, Ariane, Kruthi, and Alina. It looks like all of you finished it. Excellent. Josiah as well. Great job. Okay, so that is all for our cursive time. The more we write in cursive, the faster you guys are going to get. Um, by the time you're fourth graders at our school, you're going to write everything in cursive. But we're sort of slowly transitioning to it. So it's okay if right now, like you're doing your notes in print. Um, but the more you do it in cursive, the better you're going to get with it and the faster you're going to get. Ariange, that looks wonderful. Thank you so much. By father, that's right. Father was the one saying it, so that's a good addition. Maybe we should start doing that from now on, right? Who said it? Sometimes it's just Laura Ingalls Wilder, the writer, and then other times it's a specific character. That'd be good to include. Okay, boys and girls, time for us to learn um, a new jingle even though we're doing a little break from well-ordered language, I want us to learn the conjunction jingle because that is going to be really helpful for um, what we're doing with simple compound and complex sentences. So you can actually take out your workbook for today and follow along on the back in the back of the book on page 244. We're going to learn this new conjunction jingle. And we'll also refer back to that one from yesterday that I showed you guys. You can remember, conjunction, junction, what's your function? We've got and, but, nor, take you pretty far. Those were the most common ones, those three. That guy has a very low, deep voice. I can't get my pitch quite so low as that. Oh, actually, in science, you're learning about pitch today. His voice is a good example of a low pitch. Can you all do a low pitch? Kriti, can you see, show us a low pitch? Unmute yourself. Mine is really funny. Okay. Low. Low. Who can do a high pitch for me? Ty, give us a high pitch. Oh, sorry, I'm not that. <laughs> oh, okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> okay, that is um, definitely what, a high pitch. What page is that jingle on? Two hundred forty-four. Okay. You're gonna hear about uh, pitch Just today. Just and anonyms. There's oh, also conjunction at the top. Mm -hmm. 
So that relates well. And that conjunction junction jingle has a very low pitch. Okay, here's our conjunction jingle. Excellent job, Harika, finishing up your work. Okay, uh, conjunctions. Let's play up. Conjunction is a part of speech. It joins elements of the same rank or name. When two or more words are joined this way, they're called compounds. A conjunction is a part of speech. It joins elements of the same rank or name. When two or more words are joined this way, they're called compounds. So we are hearing this week about compound sentences. So a conjunction joins two parts of, uh, or sorry, two different clauses. But we're also going to hear later on about compound subjects, that a conjunction can join two subjects. Like Samhita and Harika. Samhita is one subject. Harika is another subject with and joining them started music lessons, right? That is a compound subject, Samhita and Harika joined with the conjunction and. Oh, nice find, Ariant William Shakespeare. Okay, can you all sing the song with me one more time, the conjunctions? A conjunction is a part of speech. It joins elements of the same way, think or name. When two or more words are joined this way, they're called compounds. A conjunction is a part of speech. It joins elements of the same rank or name. When two or more words are joined this way, they're called compounds. Okay, so that is our compound, or sorry, our conjunction song. Okay, today we're going to be focusing on compound sentences, and then we'll spend some time focusing on complex sentences as well. So we'll be practicing um, creating some compound sentences, so keep your binder open because we'll, we can just write these at the bottom of your page for spelling. Now it says combine each pair of sentences using a comma and the word in brackets. Writing compound sentences can make our writing more interesting and a little bit more mature. When we join together two independent clauses with a conjunction like and, we need a comma before that conjunction. Could somebody read this exactly as it is and then we're gonna read it as it um, a compound sentence with a conjunction. Aryansh, would you read number one for us? She did not go to the park. It was too late in the evening. Good. Now let's put that conjunction in parentheses four between the two clauses. So, Alex, or go ahead, Aryansh, yes. She did not go to the park for it was too, too late in the evening. Good. For in that one means basically because. So that makes it more interesting, doesn't it? She did not go to the park. It was too late in the evening. It also shows the connection between those two. The reason she didn't go to the park was because it was too late. It actually makes more sense with the conjunction. Do you see that? Does it actually joins it together and says, these two sentences are connected. And that conjunction four connects the two thoughts. Alexander, would you do the same thing for number two? Read them as they are, and then we're gonna add a conjunction. They arrived early at the show. They had great seats. Now let's read it with the conjunction. They arrived early at the show and they had great seats. Excellent. It joins those two thoughts together. 
Okay, now let's put it into practice with sentence three. We're going to actually write this in our, um, our binder. My family has never been to Washington. We have seen Boston. It actually doesn't even very make much sense as it is, but it's going to make more sense with a conjunction. Kruthi, could you read it to us with the conjunction? My Number three. My family has never been to Washington, but we have seen Boston. Perfect. Okay, let's write that at the bottom of your page. And it actually makes more sense now. My family has never been to Washington, but we have seen Boston. It connects those two ideas. I'll go ahead and just write it in print, but if you are strong in cursive, you can go ahead and write it in cursive. My family has never been to Washington, comma, make sure you have a comma after Washington, but we have, notice now we don't capitalize we, because it's now in the middle of a sentence. It's not the first word. We have been to Boston. Okay, so that's joining it together into a compound sentence. I'm also gonna underline the independent clause with red, just like we did yesterday, to remind us of what are the two clauses. My family has never been to Washington, but we have been to Boston. Ty? I've been to both. Nice. So you could say, Ty has been to Washington and he has been to Boston. But I was only in um, um, Seattle for a few hours because um, it was for it was for a cruise boat, cruise ship. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, but boys and fun. girls, we got to I see bet. a talking fish. What? And when you got close to it, he screamed, and the fish screamed something like, "Ah, get away from me! Ah, it's a human!" <laughs> okay, who is done with this one? This was number three on the page. Great job, Kruthi. Great job, Alina, keeping up with this. Let's do just one more. And I like number six. Let's do that. I am allergic to cats. I love to pet them. Now those are two fine, simple sentences, but a conjunction is gonna help combine these ideas. Because it doesn't really make much sense to say, I'm allergic to cats, I love to pet them. But with that conjunction yet, what is it saying now, Emma? Number six. Um, I am allergic to cats, yet I love to pet them. Great job, yeah. Basically, that's kind of like saying, even though I'm allergic to cats, I still love to pet them. And that makes more sense now, doesn't it? I am allergic to cats, yet I love to pet them. Let's write that. I'm gonna put number six there. Even though we're skipping, it's just number six on that page. I am allergic to cats, comma, yet I love 
to pet them. That makes more sense. I am allergic to cats, yet I love to pet them. Okay. So that's a good compound sentence. Both of those are compound sentence and we sentences. We made them by taking two independent clauses and joining them together with a comma and conjunction. Okay. That's all we're going to do for well-ordered language today, just to focus on compound sentences. We'll work on it with complex sentences tomorrow. Any questions about this? Yes, Kruthi? Um, I don't have a question about this, but um, in cursive, um, for my capital letters, I'm a little behind on them. So, like, um, for today, can we like, do a review of all of them? That's a great um, question. Yeah, maybe on Friday, our cursive time can just be some review of the capital letters. Great question. I also have um, the cursive alphabet, all of it posted to BrightThinker. That might help you to print it off as well. Um, it is in the BrightThinker um, cursive folder for literacy. So if we were in school, I would have even had you print it off and have it taped to your desk that you're constantly seeing a reminder of those letters. Um, if you are able to print that off so that you can always keep it at your workspace, that might be helpful. Yes, Ty, oh no, Josiah. Josiah and Simhi to have hands raised. I actually didn't my hand. Okay, <laughs> and Simhi did, I guess you don't either. Okay, it's time now for Roots and orthography notebook. Um, so take out two new index cards for roots and your orthography notebook. Give me a thumbs up if you wrote the words from yesterday's lesson in your notebook. Remember I asked you to do that? Great job. Thank you so much. It was immediate, gasoline, petroleum, and suitcase. Should have written those words yesterday. So let's write today's words. Um, should be lesson 83, I believe. Yeah, 83. Our first one was municipal. Municipal. For me, it's page 58. Municipal. The next one was Mischief. We think to spell mischief. Are you writing your words, Marcus? Once again, if you don't do it now, that means a lot more work later, and I'd hate for you to have to do that. Thank you. All right, mischief is word two. Word three was mischievous. And word four was persist. Check that yours matches mine when you're done.
Once you're done with that, we're going to close up our notebooks and take out two cards for roots today. We're gonna to try to get through this pretty quickly so that we can finish by about 9.45 and begin some math. Feel free to take a moment to stretch and get some water though if you need to. We've been in class over an hour. You guys are doing great. So this is going to be another two derivatives to go along with the jungo jungtum Latin words we've been learning, which is to join, unite, or connect. So they all have to do with joining, uniting, and connecting. Today, we're going to hear about joint. You all know what your joints are in your body? That's right. Basically, your joints like your elbows, your wrists, are where groupings of bones connect. Let me show you actually a little skeleton that we're gonna be using for science once we start learning about the human body. Okay, so we've got our skeleton here in the classroom. It is not a real skeleton. It's just made from man-made materials. However, it shows a wonderful representation of our human body. So here is Mr. Bones' arm. This is basically your elbow. It's a, your joint of your elbow is where the two bones connect. With a little bit of cartilage, you're gonna hear later about that. Down here, we've got your knee. Your knee is, your knee joint connects two bones, two leg bones, plus this little patella, your kneecap. So you're gonna hear more about the specific bones in the body and also about muscles and cartilage and everything. But a joint is basically where two bones connect. Yes, Alexander? I know a lot about cartilage because my dad had to lose some cartilage. Oh no, that sounds so painful because that if he lost some cartilage, that means his bones might rub against each other a little bit. Uh-huh. He got kidney stone. Oh, that's supposed to be so painful. I hope he recovered from it. Yep. Okay, boys and girls. So we're going to hear about these two words, joint and also disjointed. Ariyansh? Nothing? Okay, Emma? Yes, what? Oh, sorry, I thought your hand was raised. Um, for Halloween, my mom bought, uh, like, uh, last Halloween, uh, skeleton heads, and then I named them Bob, Mr. Bones, and Bonefire. Oh, you've got a Mr. Bones, too, in Bonefire. That's a good one. Joint is a place where two parts are connected. It doesn't have to be like the human body, but I wanted to connect it to that since you're going to hear about that soon. Yes, Ariyanch? I mean, <laughs> I keep misspeaking. Rishith? Ariyanch is the top one in my screen, so I think I keep saying his name when, I, when someone's hand is up. So that's joint. Uh, uh, isn't cartilage in your ear? That's great. Yeah, cartilage is in your ear. It's the kind of soft, flexible parts like your ear and nose. Very good. Okay, boys and girls, the next word we're going to learn, this is our last root of the day, disjointed. Now, dis means not, like to separate. So basically, disjointed is separated at a joint. Like maybe you're, you've got um, a Lego creation that became disjointed. It became separated. 
where it had been joined together. Oh, nice job. Looks like our shop's got a good example of a joint over there. Or if you broke up. It's a minotaur. Oh, cool. It has hooves. And claws. Very cool. Okay, so that's our second word. Disjointed is separated at the joints. And I don't know when, but it was a long time ago when my sister broke her leg. Her, it was her, I think it was the, I forgot, but she broke somewhere in her leg. Whenever she was doing the burpees on concrete. That sounds so painful. Okay, boys and girls, I Wait, love your questions talking. and comments about the things we're learning about, but that's all we have time for with Roots. We're gonna move on to some math next. So those are posted in, bright, in um, the chat, joint and disjointed. And at this time, hi, Saha Nasri, I'm so sorry you've missed so much of the class. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully you'll stay on for the rest of the meeting. I hate that you. Uh, Miss Gardner, uh, sorry, I'm yes? kind of bad. So we we have bad network at home, so that's why we we're not able to connect to the meetings. We missed the class, so she'll yes. go to the recording. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I am recording this session and it will be on YouTube later. And so she can watch kind of zoom ahead and watch just parts of it, um, mm -hmm. of whatever she missed, but she is just in time. We're about to start some math. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm give, I'm handing over to. Okay. Hey. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So boys and girls, let's start some math. You need your math notebook today and workbook. Before we begin something in the notebook, I want to go over your homework page from yesterday, reading the, um, the scale, just to make sure you've got the right answers for those. Okay. Reading the scale in kilograms and grams. So your homework page was just page 31. You know, it's supposed to be several more pages, but I'm slowing it down so that we spend two different days on weight, mass. Yes, Alexander? I just wanted to show you really quick the project I've been working on on the weight. So I would attach things to right here just like this pencil and see if it goes up or down. Oh, <laughs> very nice. That's a fun way of determining the weight of something. Does it have enough weight and gravity to bring down the balloon? Okay, boys and girls. So for kilograms and grams, let's go through the correct answers for this. Who figured out, number one, how much the chicken weighed? Some heat up. The chicken weighs two kilograms. Perfect. It looks like it would be either zero or two, but would it be zero kilograms? No. <laughs> okay, now over here, the lines are different values because this one goes up to only one kilogram for the fish. Rishith, could you share your answer?
Quote. So I don't know if any of you figured this out, but the dark black line, we're counting up by 100 each time. Okay? So if that's the case, what is 100 less than one kilogram, Rishith? 950. Close, 900. Who got that answer? 900 grams. For those of you who had a hard time with that, I, it looks sort of like you're going up by 100 more than 750 and then 200 more from 750. That's probably what you were thinking, Rishith. The 750 is for this little part. And each black line goes up by 100. Dark black. Okay, moving on to the turkey now. Now this could be at most four kilograms. That's almost halfway between two and three kilograms instead. Could somebody share their answer? Alina? <laughs> Two kilograms and 500 grams. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Going up by 100 grams between the two and three. Now remember that there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So going up by, skip counting by 100 gets us to a thousand. Arsha, what's your answer for the crabs? Uh, it's three kilograms and 10 grams. Oh, very close. Three kilograms. And instead of going up by 10 each time, which would only get us to 100, we need to go up, skip count by 100, and that gets us to 1,000. So instead of 10 grams, it's 100 grams. Okay. Very, very close. Because if we skip count by 100, we'll get to 1,000. Uh, Alexander, how much does the pineapple weigh? Easy. It's not even one, one kilogram. 900 kilo. Sorry. 900 grams. Great. Once again, if there are 10 little lines before you get to the kilogram, we're going to be skip counting by 100. It took 10 groups to get to 1,000, so that means we're skip counting by 100. Okay, Harika, finally the flower. It is five kg uh, kilograms and it's four kilograms and good. Yeah, not quite five. And there's 10 little lines between four and five. So that means we're skip counting by 100. Yeah. So how many grams? 700. Great. A little tip for some of you, maybe you figured this out, but this five has a slightly longer line. Do you guys see that? So that helps you to be able to see, okay, well that's 500, that's halfway between four and five. Now I can just go two up from five. Okay. Hopefully that helps with the scales. If you made some mistakes, that's okay. Most of these we're going to be skip counting by 100 most of the time. Some of them, when the most is one kilogram, instead of skip counting by 100, the little lines tend to be skip counting by 10. Okay. So that's what most of these are going to be. Either skip counting by 100 but with this one kilogram scale, the tiny lines might be skip counting by 10 instead. Yes, Ariash? I just know the weights of these products aren't even real. A fish can't be as heavy as a pineapple because that's a very small fish. Yeah, I think that the pineapple and fish definitely should weigh different amounts. I agree with that. Because either the fish has to weigh less or the pineapple has to weigh more. So that doesn't, this doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. I don't think it's super accurate either. Okay, boys and girls. Well, all of that aside, let's get into uh, today's lesson. We're going to keep going with kilograms, grams, um, and we're going to hear about how to convert them, just like we converted 
kilometers to meters, meters to kilometers. Okay, great job, Ariane. That's exactly right. You do need your math notebook because we're going to write out some examples of converting. And hopefully we'll also have some time since we're a little bit kind of like one day behind, we'll also at least show some pictures of liters measuring liquids. By the way, Friday you have a quiz, not a test, but a quiz, because basically we're going to combine this unit with next week's unit on standard measurement, where we're going to talk about like feet and pounds and so on. So it's going to be basically two little parts of one bigger unit. So Friday is a quiz only, not a test. Okay, time for us to get into our textbook pages. We're gonna do some conversions. Marcus, do you have your notebook ready? Great, I see your pencil in hand, perfect. By the way, for another quick little overview of the scales, do you see how this has the most as one kilogram? That's the most it could be. What do you think the red lines are skip counting by? And what do you think the black lines are skip counting by? A little review of that. Alexander? Actually, I called on you earlier. I'm going to get to Emma this time. Emma? Uh, five? So the red lines, um, very good. We're going to skip count by actually 50. This one's different because like 250 is the most. So it's not going to be skip counting by 100. It's skip counting by 50. The red lines. <laughs> and then that means that the tiny black lines are actually going to be skip counting by 10. Okay. Now over here, this is a pretty standard scale. We've got zero kilograms, one kilogram, two kilograms. How many lines are there between zero kilograms and one kilogram? And what do you think we're skip counting by? Arshab? What? What are we skip counting by with each of these little lines? Um, one. It's going to be skip counting by 100 because there are 10 groups of 100 in 1,000. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, 10 groups of 100 in 1,000. And it's actually the same with the rest of these two. So that's going to be the most common, skip counting by 100. And a lot of times they'll have one line that's a little bit longer that's like the halfway point. Okay. So once again, skip counting by 100. So once you know three kilograms, it's one, two, three, four hundred grams. So that's going to be the most frequent thing you'll see, skip count by 100 for these scales, okay? That's the most common. The one that's going to be different is this one that has a max of one kilogram. So it's going to be smaller skip counts. Okay, let's get to some conversions. says the mass of a bag of potatoes is one kilogram and 250 grams. Now, how many grams are in one kilogram? Parika, how many grams are in one kilogram? Okay. 
Harika, you're muted. 1,000 grams. 1,000, that's right. I so if was... there's 1,000 grams in one kilogram, this value of one kilogram and 250 grams is 1,250. You can break it down like this, like number bonds saying one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Marcus, you've got to have eyes up here. You can't look down at your paper. Thank you. Or if it helps, you can just think of this as a one in the thousands place. That one goes right to the thousands place. Okay, let's do an example of that in your notes. So this is the first example. You do need a header at the top of your page. March 10th, math lesson 11.3. All right, and we're going to do one problem just like that. Eight kilograms, 405 grams. We're going to convert it to just grams. Okay, now Saha Nasri. If one kilogram is eight is one thousand grams, what is eight kilograms equal to? Eight thousand grams. Correct. Eight thousand grams. So Marcus, if this eight kilograms is eight thousand grams. And then we have an extra 405 grams. What is this whole total in just grams? 8,405 uh, grams. Perfect. And a little shortcut is just to put that eight in the thousands place. And then we write the rest of the number, 405. Okay? Okay. Now let's do the opposite. If I have 3,450 grams, and I want to write it in kilograms in grams, I'm going to look for a number in the thousands place, and that is going to become my kilograms. Do I have a number in the thousands place? What's the digit in the thousands place? Josiah? Josiah, could you unmute yourself and tell us what digit is in the thousands place? What number? For number two. Three. There's three in the thousands place. So how many kilograms is that? Three. Good. 3,000 grams is going to be three kilograms. And then how many kilo, how many grams are left, Josiah? 450. Perfect. 450. Okay, boys and girls, let's do one more of each of these for you to do independently. And I want you to try this shortcut of just putting that in the thousands place, or if it's in the thousands place, just make that your kilograms. So let's do four kilograms and 56 grams, write that in just grams. 
And then over here, let's do 2,000. Uh, 2,001, or sorry, 2,011 grams. Let's write that as kilograms and grams. Miss Gardner, can you pull your sheet down? Is that better? Okay. Please do numbers three and four, and then we'll go over the answers. Can you move it to the side a little? Like this? Yes. Okay. Great job, Aryanch and Alexander. Looks like you've found your answers already. ready to go over answers. Give me a thumbs up if you have finished with these two. Excellent. Looks like we need, there are a couple people who need slightly more time. Go ahead and take a couple more minutes. And Rishith, I'd love for you to share your answer to number three afterwards. And then I'll have Marcus, share his answer for number four. Okay. Rishith, are you ready? Excellent. Can you tell me your answer to number three? 456. Okay, not quite. The four is going to be in the thousands place. 4,056. Perfect. Make sure we have a zero in the hundreds place. And then we can write 56. Marcus, could you tell me your answer to number four? My answer is two kilograms and the 11 grams. Perfect. Well so done. That, and that well and done. total in grams is 2,011 grams. Great job. Who got the same answer as Marcus and Rishith with these two? 4,056 grams and then two kilograms, 11 grams. Excellent. Okay, hopefully this is making a lot more sense. Um, let's go over what you'll do your, with your homework pages. And then I'm going to go over just a little overview of leaders for tomorrow's lesson. Okay. Now, your workbook pages for today are going to be 32 through 34, just practicing what we did. You're going to convert kilograms and grams to just grams. Remember for that one, basically you're writing the kilograms, eight kilograms is 8,000 grams. It takes longer than just seeing that that's the place value, but it's good to go through those number bonds. And then over here, this is a faster way of doing it. Just write it as 4,000 grams plus 740 grams equals 4,740 grams. The next page is the opposite. You have all grams converted to kilograms and grams. Write it out. Choose whether it makes more sense to say 150 kilograms or grams. A math textbook. If there are 10 of them, would that be about four kilograms or grams? So 
Remember that grams are smaller. One gram is about like a pencil. One kilogram is like a whole bag of apples. So keep that in mind as you do it. Then the final page is a little matching section where you've got a little elf and connect it up with the right kilograms and grams. So 3,203 grams connected up with the right kilograms and grams. I think that you guys are gonna rock this. I don't think you'll have any issues. Questions about that, Alexander? I can tell you when we're all done with math. Okay, great Thank idea. Um, I'm going to present over to now um, the images of measurements. We're going to do just a little brief overview of um, liters. We're going to get into that tomorrow. Oh, I'm having a hard time with my video again. I'll be right back. Oh, teacher, body. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's better. I'm gonna present over to the images just so you can see the types of things we're gonna talk about tomorrow with liquid measurement. For liquid measurement, we use liters and milliliters and even deciliters, not as often as that though. And basically, one liter is like a big um, bottle of soda. Do any of you ever have those around the house possibly, a big bottle of soda or similar to about like a gallon of milk? It's fairly similar to that. It's smaller. The only time we've ever had something, the only time we've ever had um, um, soda in the house was one time I was sleeping over at my mom's house and she bought me a big uh, two liter bottle of root beer and I still had something next morning and and so we still had a lot um, the next morning so I Have drink. you guys ever made a coconutal rocket then? Oh, that coconut would be and the raw. to do with this unit, Marcus. Coconut mm -hmm. and the raw. Okay. I um, okay, boys and girls, we've got to raise hands before we speak up. Now, two of these equal one liter, and that's how we measure liquid. Now, for smaller things like a little dropper, do any of you ever get medicine in a little dropper like that, possibly? So that would be measured with milliliters. If any of you ever have like NyQuil for kids or something else that's like a liquid medicine, it would be measured in milliliters. You'd also use milliliters for measuring small amounts when you're baking. Like maybe you're using some vanilla or a tiny bit of um, water in something, you'd use milliliters. Yes, Emma? Um, well, so I would have medicine, like, if I were to be sick, it would be, like, a more, like, rounder one, like, I don't know, it's not, like, the one with the squish on the end, okay. but it's, like, a push. Oh, yeah, like a syringe, and then you put the medicine in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Or a cup. And drink it. Yes. So like a big fish tank would be about 10 liters of water. A big fish tank like that. Here is a big tank of water where you can see that little water dispenser. That's about 10 liters as well. All right. So those are just some pictures of the things that we'll be talking about more tomorrow. Liters and milliliters. Okay, any final questions before you go? Otherwise, we're going to start reading groups in just a moment. Yes, Risha? Uh, uh, if, like, uh, the bottles have sugar in it, it's going to sink more. If it what? Like, sometimes, in a, like, in a tank of water, and there's, like, a bottle of something... But and if you and if there's more like a soda can, if it has more sugar, it's gonna sink. Oh, interesting. So depending on the sugar content. 
Okay, boys and girls, we are about out of time. So I'll have just my reading group stay with me and then I'll talk to, oh, Ari, or Alexander and Ariane, should you both have something to share with the whole class? Um, okay, yes. we'll have to keep it short, but go ahead. So surprisingly for the balloon, I found something very surprisingly heavier. A pen and a pencil is heavier than a balloon. Oh my goodness, just a little pen and pencil makes it drop. Yep. Cool. Right. Yes, Ariyanch? I think it probably some of you guys know, but if you were able to find a big, big, ginormous bathtub to put Saturn in, it would actually um, float instead of sinking. Even That's right. Saturn, it's yeah, it huge, but it has very little mass. That's what we read in our book whenever we were going to write our paragraph. That's right, Emma. We read that in our little book on Epic, didn't we? Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, boys and girls, I'm just going to have my reading group stay. Everybody else, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 It's Wednesday, that's right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Boys, if you need to get a drink of water or a little snack, you are welcome to do that. We are going to hear about Badger. So we have entered the wild wood and we're about to hear about Badger. Do you guys remember who that is? Rishith? Be right back. Uh, Badger the Badge. The, the, they found a door scraper and then it says Mr. Badger on it. It's his home. That's right. There was a little door scraper and they are kind of afraid of Badger. So we'll see if there's a good reason to be afraid of Badger. Okay, so who'd like to begin at Once Beyond the Village? Um, I'll have uh, Josiah start. Once beyond the village, they could smell the friendly fields again. They plodded along toward home. Each was lost in his own thoughts. Rat was a bit ahead of Moa. Suddenly, Moa stopped then in his tracks. His nose twitched. He smelled something familiar, something wonderful. A rush of old memories flooded every one of his senses. He took another sniff and knew what wonderful smell was. Home! Moa looked around below him. Close by was the home he had left. Moa looked around below him. Close by the home he had left. He was sure of it. It was small, poorly fur fur furnished half home. But home but the home's home was happy to get Back after his days were it occurred to him that the home must have been happy with him too. 